you want to go from this to this? In this video, we are going to show you every single part of getting dressed in a kilt outfit from start to finish. Now, when you're getting dressed in a kilt, it's easiest to work from the bottom up. So we're going to start with our kilt hose. Kilt hose are your socks. You pull those all the way up. They're going to go above your knee to start. And you grab your flashes. These are elastic garters that help hold the socks up. They attach with metal fittings and an adjustable strap right there. They go on the outside of the leg and you can wear them somewhere between the side of the leg and the front of the shin bone, somewhere in this region. Next, you're going to fold down the top of your, or top of your kilt hose over top of the flashes and they're going to be about three fingers breadth below the bottom of the kneecap. Next, we're going to tie our ghillie brogues. These are the fancy shoes you wear with your kilt outfit. Now, they have really long laces with tassels on the end. So what you're going to do to start is take one lace in each hand and wrap them around each other about four or five times. You're going to pull them taut and make a little column running down the front of the leg. You're going to pass the laces behind your leg and do a half knot in the back. You're going to pull them back around front, do a half knot in the front. And this is going to be about three or four fingers breadth above the top of the leather part of your shoe. Next, you're going to make your bunny ears. You're going to tie these reasonably snug and you're going to double knot them. So that way, when you're out for the day, the tassels on the end of the laces don't untie the laces for you. Lastly, if you do have a ski and do, which is the knife that you stick in your sock, it's going to be worn on the dominant hand and you just basically tuck that into your sock with about two or three fingers breadth showing above the top of the sock. The elastic garter of the flash will actually keep this in place. All right, now that we have the legs covered, we move on to the star of the show, the kilt. You'll notice the kilt has a flat front apron and the pleats in the back. Remember, when you're wearing it, the pleats go in the back. Now you start by unfolding the kilt all the way and passing it around behind yourself. Remember, the pleats go in the back, and in your right hand, you should have a single strap. On the left-hand side of your kilt, you're going to notice that there's a hole in the kilt. Take that strap and pass it through the hole in the corresponding buckle. Now, my belly button is about here. You wear the kilt about two inches above the belly button because this strap is actually cinched right on your hip bone. So, pulling it reasonably snug on the left-hand side, you're going to put the strap through the other end of the buckle, twist the kilt around a little bit, and then on the right hand side, you're going to restrap the corresponding buckle on the right and strap the hip strap. This one you're going to leave a little bit loose. You don't want that one to be too snug because you can end up pulling the front apron a little bit. So after you have your hip strap done, two other things you want to check. Number one, your gig line. There's a center line down the front of your kilt. You want that in line with your placket of buttons and in line with your belly button. The second thing you want to check is that the bottom of the kilt is either hitting you middle of the knee or top of the knee. That's generally the range of where you want the bottom of the kilt to sit. Next, we're going to move on to the kilt belt. To size a kilt belt, what you're actually going to do is wrap it around you upside down so that the Velcro side is facing out. Connect the belt and buckle, and then you're gonna pull snug across and attach the Velcro around back. Now this looks weird, I know, but when you disconnect it and take the little keeper and slide it up, and then you go to actually wear the kilt belt properly, it's going to fit you perfectly. Now, because I'm going to be wearing a vest with the outfit that I'm putting together today, I would not wear a kilt belt. So for this outfit, I'm going to leave the kilt belt off. The next part of the kilt we're going to talk about is the kilt pin. The kilt pin is a decorative metal pin that's worn about 
six inches or seven inches up from the bottom of the kilt and about two inches in from the edge. It's worn above the right knee. You'll notice I'm not pinning it through all the layers, both aprons of the kilt. I'm only pinning it through the top layer. Now, when you put it through, use the lines on the tartan as a bit of a guide to make sure you're getting it nice and straight vertical on the kilt. And that's about how it should sit and look when it's finished. The next part of the outfit we're gonna talk about is the sporn. Now, the sporn is the bag that you wear in the front. This is where you keep all your money, your keys, your wallet, all that kind of stuff. So, it comes with a sporn chain that's part leather, part chain. You're gonna disconnect the leather sporn chain, or the strap, excuse me, and you're going to hold it essentially over your manhood and pass it around behind you. Now, in the back, you're going to actually put the belt into the sporn strap exactly where it's hanging down in front. Here's a neat trick. When you wear the sporn and after you have it adjusted with the belt exactly where you want it, you don't have to readjust the belt every time. On the back of the sporn, there's a little D-ring and a little clip. Just disconnect the clip from the D-ring and now it's sized appropriately to you. Now, if you have a problem trying to buckle it behind your back, you find it a little bit difficult, one thing you can do is pull it reasonably snug and do it on the side of your body. And this may take a little bit more trial and error, but you can get it as snug as you'd like it there and then spin it in front and see if it fits. And if not, loosen or tighten it a notch or two. Now on the back of your kilt, you have two loops. They're about three inches tall. A lot of people think those are belt loops. They're not. They're actually sporin loops. For guys with what we affectionately call noacetal disease, or a flat butt, so to speak, you pass your sporin chain through those loops, and therefore it won't fall down over time. So once you have the sporin chain behind you, and you're reconnecting it on the front, I'm gonna show you another trick. If you're a guy with a little bit of a belly in the front, you can take the top of your sporin chain and kind of hook it over top of the buckles on the side of your kilt. And then that way it's gonna hang nice and neat down the front side. The next part of the outfit we're gonna talk about is the necktie. What I have found is that when it comes to wearing a necktie with a kilt, generally speaking, the simpler the necktie, the better. So a lot of times I will wear a solid color necktie. Usually I'll pick an accent stripe in the kilt and use that color for my necktie, and usually my flashes as well. Now, when you go to tie your necktie, I found that if you have a point collar, a four in hand knot works very nicely. If you have a spread collar like I have on here, then a half Windsor is a great knot to use. Now, when it comes to the shirt, obviously a light blue or a white dress shirt are both very, very safe options. If you wanna live on the edge a little bit, you can do a tattersall shirt or a shirt with a little bit of a pattern, but you wanna make sure that it doesn't wanna fight with the kilt. You want it to complement the kilt and or complement your jacket. Next, we're gonna talk about the jacket and vest. Now, if you have a black jacket and vest, obviously you don't have to worry about color matching. If you have a tweed jacket and vest, then you have a few options. What I like to do personally is pick a tweed that tones well with one of the colors in my kilt. So in the kilt that I'm wearing here, it has several shades of blue. So I picked a Loman blue jacket and vest to tone nicely with the kilt. One quick point about kilt jackets. You'll notice that the body of the jacket is actually cut much shorter than a regular suit jacket is. That's to allow you to see all the pleats in the back of the kilt versus a regular suit jacket, which would cover the majority of your pleats. And there you have it. Now you're looking sharp and ready to go. The last thing to remember when you're wearing a kilt, shoulders back, chest out, smile, and be confident.